this, the output of this is going to be a set M. Right, so this set M is going to be size sure. N over 5, right? right. This N over 5 yeah. elements. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is 5 an arbitrary constant? or it, 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 You can use other constants, but, but 5 will, it, it needs to be at least 5, and, it, and it's useful that it's odd. Um, and, and, oh, okay. Because if it was 4, the median is, uh, you know, it's not clear exactly what the, the, you can define the median in different ways. And, um, okay, so, um, so then we're going to recursively, um, um, compute median M on M. Okay. So if we stop here, this value M is not the overall median. Okay. So uh, um, so if, if if we stopped here, this you can see that this would be just this part would run in linear time, right? So you would not believe this will run in linear time, or not clear why. If I just stop at, at size C, at step C. Okay. Why did you write an arrow M at the end of step B? The, the, the output of this finding a median on each set is going to be a set M. Okay. Right? This Which M has nothing set. to do with M memory. No. Uh, all right. Thank you, that's a little clearer. Yeah, yeah. So um, split um, we'll call this data set D. Um, ah, shouldn't use R either. Okay, let's call this Q. Okay, split data set D into L, which is going to be um, the elements D in D um, such that D is less than M and, and R, which is the elements D in D such that D is greater or equal to M. Okay? Um, so, so now we need to make a decision. Um, if, if the size of L is less, so if this size of L is less than um, um, n over 2, the, the, then what we want to do is to, um, so actually, let's define this median operation as, as finding the element of rank n over 2. Right, so we're going to call this algorithm as median of um, of a set D with the value n over two. Right, so here I'm going to call median on um, this is so recursively. I'm, I'm going to call this this median algorithm on Q with size q over 2. Right? And so here I'm going to call median on L with size n over 2. Um, if L is, the size of L is, oh, this should be greater than, um, if it's um, if it's greater than equal to n over 2, then call median on this. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to call median on the set on the right with size um, n over 2 minus um, the size of L. OK. So this step should be clear. Here, I'm using my m as a pivot. It's not exact, but it should be somewhere in the middle, hopefully, and it should split two sets left and right. And based on the size, I know everything in L is less than everything in R. So if the size of L is greater or equal than n over 2, I know the median must be in there. 
and the rank of that element is going to be the n over two largest element in it. So I'm still finding the same rank element. It's going to be towards the right side of it, um, but I'll still call it the same algorithm. If the median, if I know the median is an R, then I need to recursively call an R, and it's probably going to be on the left side of R. Um, so I need to change the rank that I find it at to n over two minus l. Um, so, so do people believe, does they want to have any doubts that this algorithm will actually find the right median? Maybe I'm off by a, a one someplace, but. Um, Just reading your writing, you say L equals open brace, D element of D, and then bar, and then that's such that. Uh, so, yes, okay, so, so, so using the open, the, the curly brackets means that this is a set. And I want to look at all the elements of the set D that satisfy this condition. Usually you can just use the bar instead of such that. So, so this is this is a fairly standard set condition. So it's all the elements left of the pivot, all the elements greater or equal than the pivot. And so then so everyone believes this will actually find the median. Okay, so in, in internal memory, it's linear time because the um, you can do this operation takes linear time. This operation is going to be run on a set of size n over five, so it's going to decrease geometrically. So if, if you ran up something on size one half, you add up one plus one half plus one quarter plus one eighth, you're going to get to something less than two. If you do if you do 1 plus 1 fifth plus 1 over 25, this, this is going to add to less than 2 as well. So that's what recursively this step is going to do. You can then look at this step here and say, how big are these instances going to be? You want the instance of L and R to be small enough. You can say that the max of L and R is going to be less than n over 7. Okay? Um, so basically the runtime here is, is going to be the time on n plus n, that's going to be this split step, plus time on n over 5, that's this recursive step, plus the time on n over 7. Um, oh no, it's not n over 7, sorry. This is going to be 7n over 10. Yeah, so this size here is almost 7 tenths. Uh, okay, and if, if you, okay, so if you add, if you add these up, and this is in internal memory, then um, the recursive the time for this, you can, you can work out with standard things. Yeah. You can work it out with some careful analysis. I'm, I'm not going to do it, do it here. But the, the, this isn't going to change when you make this IRA efficient or cash of Lucas. So, so let's not, um, this concept will still be true. You can see that it's going to be the, the medium of set of size. So at, at most, there's at most two fifths of all of the elements um, are going to be larger than than their median, which is in Q, um, and at most, and at least half of those um, elements uh, will be smaller than than the, the than the value of the split. And you can kind of work out the math. And you get seven tenths. Um, do that as a, as a homework exercise. So, um, okay, so let's look at this algorithm. Let's see about making this to be IO efficient, even cache oblivious. Okay? So this first step here, let me get another color. Um, the first step here, I split into sets of size n over 5. Yeah? Um, what's the idea of going through this complicated algorithm if the uh, result is only of order n? I mean, it seems like I could get order n just by reading all the data in this, in this gargantuan stream. To um, define the median. You need to find well, the we'll actually talk about this. The, 
you need a uh, square root n space to find, um, or it actually you need, I guess, linear space to find the median view, or square root n passes over the data. You can't do it in one pass. Oh, okay. Um, it's maybe it's worth worth thinking about, but you basically need to need to sort the data to find where the median point is. Or you can do something like this. You don't need okay. to. Okay, so by doing something like this, we've reduced it from n log n down to n. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Right, right. Okay, so 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 this thing of splitting into sets of size five what, what is basically something we get for free. Right? We you know, as we're just read it in sequential order and get sets of size five. And then well we want to find the median of each set. Well we read them, we can have, it's like we can read things of size five into memory, and we can, you know, it's a constant size operation to find the median of them. You can sort the five things, whatever. Okay, so these we can do. This, this together, is going to take O of n over b um, ios. Uh, or actually, just n over b, you know, plus two ios total. Right. Um, and then we're going to need to write out something else to memory. So writing this out to memory, um, so, so in order to get the set, we're going to need 2 times this, because this set Q is going to be, we need to write this up. So we need another Q um, or a stack to write this Q out to memory. So then this is going to be on disk somewhere. We're going to read this Q back in from disk. And then we're going to recursively call this. So, um, okay, so we'll deal with this recursive call in a second. Let's look at this split operation. This split operation is, is going to be, um, so how long does it take to do this split operation? Assuming your, your m over b is at least 3. We assumed it was at least B, B squared, right? So bigger than. So can you do this cache obliviously? So this same thing we did on quicksort, right? So, so you have an input stream. Um, this is, say, a stack that has Q in it, right? Or the stack that has our whole. Um, our, our whole data set D. We're going to read this in, reading just the, the thing that we need at a time. We're going to have some operation, and the output is going to be two, um, two stack operations. And every element that comes in here, we're going to compare versus this value M in memory, and either, either write it here or here. And whenever, let the OS automatically, whenever one of the blocks fills up, to push it up to memory. So by just filling up the block as we need it, we'll use this uh, ideal cache assumption to say we won't have touched that block in a long time, so it'll get pushed out to memory instead of one of these two other, one of these two other blocks or, um, that we're reading from or the other one that we're writing to. Okay? So it's easy to do this splitting into two sets, um, IO efficiently and in fact cache obliviously. We don't need to know the block size really implement this, if we assume the ideal cache. Okay, so, so that means this we can also do in O of n over b items, this step here. So now, let's look at these two steps, c and e. In both of these, we've reduced the problem size. This one, we've still reduced it by a factor 5, and this one, we've reduced it by, you know, um, by uh, to be 7 tenths of the previous size. Okay, so instead of this runtime here, so, so this is going to be the time on size n over 5. This is going to be the runtime of size 7 n over 10. Right, so, so the total runtime now, time n, and this is now the time in, in the IOs, is going to be O of n over b plus t of n over 5 plus t of um, n times 7 over 10. 
And so if, if this works out to be O of N, then we can say that this is going to work out to N over B. Current uh, N over 5 step can further be reduced to N over B. A and the step oh, N over B, yeah, if we... Step C. You can still be reduced to... N yeah, so B. you could you could reduce this step if you knew the block size, but not, not this step. So you're not going to do any better. It's, it's not going to... It's not going to... Th th this already is not the dominant cost. Yes. The dominant cost is this O of N over B. Right? This brings quite down here. These two things are going to be geometrically decreasing. They're both getting smaller each time you do them. So the, the, the bottleneck is the, is the single pass you make over the data. So if you knew the block size, you could, you could improve this. I agree, by splitting into sets of size B, or roughly B instead of 5. Um, what's, what's going to happen, though, is your bound here may not be as good. Um, you, you may not as, have as good I'm not sure I have to think about whether the 7 tenths is any, any better or not but it's not going to improve the runtime because you still have to at least make a linear scheme so um, it, it might be worth implementing to see if you can improve it by doing instead of 5 you choose, choose a larger constant yeah. and the 7 tenths figure that's a an empirical rule of thumb like the size five. Well, the five. So you can you can analyze this process and, and guarantee that the the maximum of these two L and R is going to be less than seven tenths. Seven tenths is not a constant that you put in. Five is a constant you put in. Uh, if you look in the algorithm, seven tenths does not show up. Okay. This is in the analysis. Um, so ideally. In, in practice, this may be closer to one half, um, but it's uh, um, one half in the worst case, it's going to be seven tenths. It's like one half and one one of the size of and by two plus five. Yeah, yeah. So it, it has to be bigger. It's probably it probably all bigger. bigger than, what? It has to be bigger than one half, right? Well, it's well, it's probably not going to be exactly half, but it's going to be closer to one half than seven tenths. This is like seventy percent. It's probably going to be like. 52 percent or something like that. Um, okay. But you can see that this whole algorithm, I didn't need to know the block size in order to implement this. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Those uh, red portion is uh, when we uh, put uh, B instead of 5, huh? Well, so y you might be able to, you could if you're just our efficient, but not if you're cash oblivious. This five is an input parameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can when you're doing cache oblivious, you can only <coughs> use absolute constants. They can't depend on B in the algorithm description. If I wanted to put B here, this is an important distinction. This would not be cache oblivious. It would only be it, it may still be IO efficient, but it's not going to improve the runtime on mathematically. So how to get that uh, red portion? So th this is the analysis, right? So steps A and B and steps D, I can do in O of N over B IOs, right? And I don't need to know the size of B to do that. This is the cost of step C, and this is the cost, and this is the cost of step E, right? I can say this because the problem size here is reduced by one fifth because of, of how I define this step. And here, and it's step E, I know the cost is reduced by, to be at most 70% of the previous size. Mm -hmm. Right? So both of these are smaller problem sizes than they were before. So, so that's how I get these back. So it's the same cost. So I'm calling the same algorithm recursively, but on a smaller problem size. So this is standard algorithm analysis. So you can, you can try and move. But if you haven't done these before, the kind of the, the simplest way to pretty much see that's right, it's not a proof, but is to write out these, these things recursively. So write out something like, you know, n over b plus n over b to over 5 plus n over b over 25 and so forth. The tricky thing is you need to split, you're splitting two ways here. 
Um, I link to some lecture notes in the, in the sorting lecture that go through this in much more detail. They explain why the seven tenths occur and how to actually analyze this when you have a double, double recursion here. But you've probably seen analysis before where you get like Tn is equal to um, 2 of T of n over 3. Right, you can analyze, you would know how to analyze this maybe using the master rule or something like that. Um, I forget, it's been, it's, been, it's been a while. But, so think of your, instead of two things, you can, you can think of uh, putting a constant front here, you just have two recursion steps. So, so there's a whole kind of, uh, if you, when you take an algorithms class, you should learn how to analyze these things. Okay. Um, okay, so we're, we're, Running out of time, so I'm going to going to quickly go through a couple of other um, a couple of other models. Um, so the first is a model. Um, there's only one R parallel. Um, this model. And so the, this model is such that. You have um, one CPU, you have one RAM, and the RAM can talk to the CPU. But instead of one disk, you're going to have D1, D2, up to D, D. So you have D of these disks. And and the and the model is such that you can you can do IOs on each of these disks, and you only have to um, most of the cost is the seek time, the reading of the disk, not the implanting into the RAM. That's not entirely true. So there's some so you can't simultaneously put two things in RAM often, or and in in some cases you can, but that's not always true in every architecture. Um, but you can, you can, uh, you should, if you have more disks, the idea is you should, say you have D disk, you should be able to speed this up by a factor D. So you have D um, disk. Um, so the main question is, um, can you speed up by a factor of, of D? Right, so if you had 10 disks and you could access them in parallel, can you do stuff faster? Okay, so how fast could you scan a data set? N by B to D, I mean, N divided by B. And divided by D. Yeah, right. So, so scanning data set, you're dividing not only by B but also by D, right? Um, so the, the you know if the data set is evenly spread out across the disks, then you can access it um, in uh, um, each of the blocks in, in, in parallel. Um, so so typically, what you want to do is actually. Um, is, is to kind of, um, is to stripe your data set and to store it so that if you have data one, um, like this, where you're gonna have this on disk one, you're gonna have one, one, one in one block and four, four, four. And then on disk two, you're going to have two, 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 and five, five, five. You know. And on this disk, you're going to have three. In the Halloween number. Yeah, yeah, you know that. <laughs> so, um, so um, imagine it's a six six zero. Right. That makes it feel better. Um, so. So, um, so, so then as you're reading these, you can access them 
the one from this disk and then start querying the one from this disk and so forth. So this is called striping. And a lot of algorithms, if you stripe your data, you can, you can get a factor of D in, increase in the, or um, decrease in, in the runtime. Um, so if you're, if you're sorting, you can get the runtime to be n over b times b so it's it's basically fast, faster by a factor d there's not an extra d inside inside this term here um, because this has to do with the height of the tree and you or the height of the the number of say number of merges um, epics of merges you have to do so you can't improve this but this basically comes down to lots of scanning over the data sets. In each pass, you can improve by a factor d, right? So you can so, so you can improve here. Um, th th there's actually an entire book um, that's written on on this model. It covers some of the external memory model, but there's not a, a great reference just for the external memory version. Of it. But the parallel. This model has an entire book about it. Um, Excuse me, is it commercially used anywhere? As of now? Um, commercially used, the parallel disk? No, there's yeah, this kind of model. Yeah, so, so the external memory model, I know of, I've got a good friend who started a company who did this to handle uh, massive terrains. And so the, 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 there's huge terrain data that's terabytes and terabytes, and you can't run any complex algorithms on large scale trains unless you use these algorithms. There's another company that is based on, it's supposed to be based on the cache oblivious algorithms, I think, although they often don't always stick completely to that. Um, by some people out of Rutgers, I forget the name exactly what the company does, but it, um, that's, uh, it, they, they provide some back end and some, some libraries to try to speed this up. Um, the people who do the train stuff also have the TPI library, which is free and open source. Um, and then the B-tree stuff and a lot of the algorithms based on searching is ingrained in almost every, every database system. They all use this. Um, and a lot of these ideas are in like a lot of these MapReduce type systems. They take care of these things. They don't just do these things, they're doing lots of other stuff as well. So the, 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 this does find its way into, into companies. Okay. Um, so the, the one for trains and the cache abilities ones are the only like, explicit ones I know about, based, you know, primarily based on these. Um, I, just, just quickly, um, there's, the, the, there's, there's a different model called the parallel external memory. Maybe I'll erase this. And so the, this model is kind of the, the, the dual of this. You have one disk, you have one um, well you, and then you have um, multiple RAMs. And each of these is attached to a, um, a CPU. So you have, this is processor one, this is processor two, and this is processor P. Right, so, so now instead of having more disk, you have more processors. So this may be closer to what s some of your computers actually look like. Although P may only be something like four, but some places people may have 16 on their, on their the cores of their computer. And they'll often each have their own, their own uh, memory, but you probably only have one disk. Um, so then the big question is, can you um, um, decrease um, 
time by um, by p. And so, so, so um, I can know because it seems like the only thing we're parallelizing here is the stuff that is essentially free anyway. So in in this model, you make the other assumption that. Of course, this is really good. So th that the other I mean, assumption is that the time is is in here, and you can access the, can the, the, the the disk time. Um, you, the, the the time is actually putting it in memory or not, and you can make multiple calls to disk Um So maybe this disk is actually is actually multiple disks, and you can access them in, in, in parallel, um, and you're not worried about the number of disks. So if you assume that the, you can make each of these can make an I/O call, and this is done in parallel. Then can you speed this up by a factor? So again, the model is slightly different. Um, it's, it doesn't make sense to ask these questions if you don't change where the bottleneck is. Um, and just to write this up, um, so in in scanning, you can do it at O of n over b times p plus log. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about why you need this log of p um, later on when we talk about some p random stuff, but, but this will come up. And it's usually not the, not the dominant term. And you can do sorting um, in, uh, what is it? Exactly like you would expect. Um, For the same reason as before. So you can, if you assume that these can each make I/O queries in parallel with no conflicting costs at the disk, then you can improve by a factor. Um, again, you can you can do it by essentially scanning these these things in in, um, in parallel, or once you break them down to small enough pieces, you you handle those. So, um, so, so okay, so. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful I'll be able to do a lecture on graph external memories on Friday, and then we'll delay the start of streaming to um, until until next week Friday. I'm out of town uh, next week Wednesday, so there's no class then. Um, whoever was so, okay. So for the scribing schedule, the people who want to stay at their lectures, and I, I move someone forward, or do I want to you keep your date? Or someone who wants to volunteer for, if I do IO efficient graphs, does someone want to volunteer scribing for that in place of something else later? Okay. I can do it. Okay. Um, 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 okay, so we'll, we'll figure it out on Friday. Okay. Great.